Hi, my name is David Forrest. I'm a member of the Meeting Place. I'm also an infectious diseases and critical care physician at the Nanaimo Regional General Hospital. This is an important message for all of you and I ask you to pass it on. COVID-19 is a serious disease. Coronavirus is one of the causes of the common cold. And like the common cold, it is easily passed on through droplets we all produce, even as we're speaking. And those droplets can contaminate surfaces they come in contact with and where the virus can last for hours or even days to be picked up on unsuspecting hands which touch eyes or mouth or other mucous membranes causing infection. You've no doubt heard there are about 30 cases on Vancouver Island, but that's only 30 that have been confirmed by testing. We're not testing everyone. It's likely there are hundreds or thousands infected. While it's true that most people infected are not very sick, some are. And even if only 1-2% to 2 of those infected die, if even only 20% of the Canadian population develop infection, that's 140,000 people who will die. That's staggering. In Nanaimo, if 20,000 become infected, that's 400 who could die. But many more than that will need hospital care. 14%. In Nanaimo alone, that could be 2,800 people for a hospital that has a maximum capacity of 400. And 5% require ICU care. That's 1,000 in Nanaimo alone if only 20,000 or 20% of our population is infected. But remember that the Nanaimo Regional General Hospital serves a far greater area, the whole of Central Island, a population of 200,000. You can double those numbers. You've seen the news. You've seen what's happening other places. The burden on our health care system will be massive and overwhelming. We are worse off in Nanaimo because we only have about 4.5 ventilator ICU beds per 100,000 people. That's far less than there are in the rest of the Western world, far less than there are in Italy, where this, their healthcare system has been massively overwhelmed. And NRGH serves the whole of Central Island, as I say, from Ladysmith to Qualicum to Port Alberni to the West Coast, a population of about 200,000. And this is not an old person's disease. It's likely common in the young, but youth and kids don't get very sick with this virus and may even be asymptomatic, but they can pass it on to others. Yes, it is older people and those with serious underlying medical conditions that are most at risk for complications, but, but up to 50% of ICU admissions have been in people under age 50. And while fewer than half of people who go to ICU die, most of those who get through ICU are on a breathing machine with tubes stuck in every orifice and poked daily for intravenous lines or blood work for weeks. And it is yet unclear if there will be any permanent lung damage from the infection. If we don't do something now to prevent a lot of people from becoming infected, we will overpower our healthcare system. Some of you will get very sick and some of you will die. It may be your mother, your grandfather, your best friend, your neighbor, your child. I submit it is your civic duty to do your part now to protect our community. It is imperative we follow the golden rule, treat others the way you want them to treat you. We must take care of each other now if we're going to get through this. What can you do? If you're a business owner and your business is non-essential, that is, not a grocery store, pharmacy or gas station, you should be closed or running from home or by shipping in the internet. You and your employees then are the real heroes and I know you may suffer financially. We should all be grateful to you. If you can work from home, do so. Regardless, we must isolate ourselves. Stay at home. The only shopping you should be doing is for essentials like groceries or better yet, order them for delivery. Go out, but in a manner that is safe, like a hike or a walk where you won't be near others. Kids, hard as it is, you've got to stay home. Now you have an advantage over us old codgers. 
in being readily able to connect with your friends and even play with them through the internet. But no play dates, no going to the park, no playing sports, no hanging out, no mingling, no daycare. Wash your hands a lot, especially after touching the surfaces before and after entering or exiting a building, including your home, as well as the usual types, like before and after eating or using the washroom. Clean your house, especially high touch surfaces like the kitchen and bathrooms. And don't forget these disgusting bug infected cell phones. Diluted bleach is great. Hydrogen peroxide too. Ammonium compounds are okay. And please look out for your neighbors who are shut in and alone. If you're sick with a fever or a new or worsening cough, do not go out unless you are feeling very unwell or are short of breath and need to seek medical attention. I wish I could say there was a central site for assessment in Nanaimo, but sadly there is none. Call 811 or your family doctor's office. If you're short of breath, go to the emergency department. And if you have a mask, when you're sick is the time to wear one. A mask won't protect you from getting sick, but if you are sick, it will prevent those droplets from getting everywhere and possibly infecting others. Finally, please advocate at your municipal level for greater limits, for more lockdown of non-essential services, for more enforcement of isolation restrictions. But also remember to extend your love to one another, to your friends, to your neighbors. Keep in touch and hug virtually. Your contribution is just as important to defeating this viral scourge as is the work of the men and women on the front lines of healthcare. By the grace of God and the hard work of all of us, we can contain this yet. Otherwise, my ugly mug may be the last face you see. And it may be to tell you, I'm sorry, but there is no life support left for you. Thank you.